थैंक यू शोभाजीत वी विल नाउ हैव अ संगीत बाय जयंत चक्रवर्ती जयंत प्लीज गो हेड विद चैंटिंग संगीत विवेकानंद सूर सचित सुख स्वरूपाय स्वामी ने खातरो वीर जो ब्रह्म के जो मूर्ति धोरी खातरो वीर जो ब्रह्म के जो मूर्ति धोरी जो जो मूर्ति धोरी शो दिल शंकी तो जाने पुलक जागल हताशो जीवन आशा शो दिल शंकी तो जाने पुलक जागल हताशो जीवन उत्तिष्ठा गरजी साधन उत्तिष्ठा गरजी साधन शक्ति नाशील एवसुधार जो ब्रह्मते जो मूर्ति धोरिया मृत्यु मोदेर नहीं कार तो के देगी से हरा उठे दारा पीछे सपन छृत पुत्र मृत्यु मोदेर नहीं रे कार तो के देवी से हारा उठे तारा सपन छो से बार विजय के तनु निर्भर बिदोरी गुन बार विजय के तन निर्भरी गुन धन्य हईबे विश्वभुवन धन्य हईबे विश्वभुवन छे आदा शिशुता जो जो मूर्ति धोरिया उठिल रे मधुरी जो 
for such a beautiful song so now we we'll go with the talk we are very happy to present the talk arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached what is meant by that by swami shanti vratanand ji maharaj revered swami ji is a monk of ramakrishna order and is currently serving at shri ramakrishna ashram mysuru he is an inspiring speaker and delivers talk on personality development indian culture stress management Indian philosophy and scriptures he has presented research papers at many conferences across india and is a frequent contributor of articles on religion and spirituality in kannada newspapers he gives talks to state government officers at the administrative training institute mysuru as well as to researchers and professors at a ugc human resource resource academy swami ji holds a phd in philosophy from the university of mysore uh, pranam swami ji over to you Namaste. Thank you for the. Am I audible? Yes, Swami Ji. Okay. Thank you for the Young Soldiers of Break on the group for inviting me to discuss and to share my views on this wonderful topic. Arise, awake, stop not till the goal is reached. सब तो अमितु अंग्रेजी ते कथा बोली क्या नो जे जे आज की सुनार जे जे लोग इस चे प्राय अनेक बंगाली लोग थकते पारे किंतु अनेक नॉन बेंगाली तो आचे आजने पूरा इंग्लिश इंग्लिशे कथा बोली यदि क्वेश्चन जिज्ञास कर समय अपना इंग्लिश ने ना यदि कथा ना बोला बोले मुश्किल बोले हिंदी में ना बोले बांग्लाते अपना जिज्ञास करते असुविधा नहीं वक्तृता तो अंग्रेजी ते थको ठीक है बोधा arise away and stop not till the goal is reached this is the great saying uttered by swami vivekananda my dear engitians who does not who does not know in the world as well as the special reference to india every indian knows this great magnanimous statement of the cyclonic monk of swami vivekananda many of us or most of us we make this statement as our whatsapp in our whatsapp status or in the profile picture or in the facebook in the social networks many times we do keep sharing swami ji's this magnanimous statement if you see the source of this statement it comes from the upanishad that is katopanishad which is the dearest upanishad to swami vivekananda uttishtha jagrata prapya varani bodhata the wonderful translation of this part of this shloka is given by swami ji as arise away stop not till the goal is reached now most of us we keep quoting this we keep saying this uh, saying this wonderful sentence in our talks in our speeches so on and so forth but hardly or many of us most of the time we don't think we don't cogitate what does it mean this is the one of the greatest drawback of today present youth the most revered swami rangnathan ji maharaj the 13th president of the ramakrishna math mission he gives in his he mentions in his introduction saying that the bhagavad gita is the quaint essence of upanishads if indians had taken the teachings of bhagavad gita seriously if they had understood and if they had imbibed in their life whatever the problems we faced in india from the cultural point of view from the civilization point of view in from the religious point of view so on and so forth probably most of the problems many of the problems would have been avoided but instead of that we just worship the bhagavad gita book keeping in the home shrine so similarly many times the life and legacy of swami vivekananda bhagwan sri ramakrishna paramahamsa 
Holy Mother Sharda Devi, APJ Abdul Kalam, or Bhagat Singh. We all admire them. We all respect them. We worship them, garlanding their photos and celebrating their birthday celebrations, their birthdays. Instead of that, okay, this is also good. But along with that, if we can study, please watch my words. I am not asking you people to read the their life and teachings. I am asking you people to study their life and teachings. We have to study the life and teachings of these great people and we should try to imbibe their ideas, if not for many, one or two in our life so that we will have the all-round development, our character development, and we can develop our willpower. We can develop thinking. We can sharpen our intellect. We can set our attitudes right, so on and so forth. So in this regard, when some of your friends, when they approached me, what, what will you take or what would you like to discuss in this uh, online platform? Something in the last I said, Vishal, because most of the youngsters are participating in this online session, I thought I will take a small break on this magnanimous statement, half quoted statement, so that we'll be able to understand how it is beautiful, how it has got an in depth meaning. So, on which Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, in one of his utterances, he says, The caste is ready. I have prepared the caste. Put yourself in that caste so that you can reach your goal. This is told by Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. When we hear the utterances of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, what do we understand? He has prepared a caste and we have to put ourselves into that caste so that we will be able to reach our goal, so that we, be we can become a human being. Manusho, that's what Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna tells in one of his teachings. So what does it mean? Means Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna led the beautiful life. Led the he led the ideal life and he has given teachings also. If we can follow his teachings instead of blindly following, if we can understand and if we can follow his teachings so that we can also become the better person. In reality, we can be human beings. We can travel ourselves from the instinct level to the intelligence and from the level of intelligence, we can reach to the intuitive level or the level of intuition. That is what Dio Yona Prachodaya, the part of Gayatri Mantra means. So we have to travel ourselves from the instinct level to the intelligence and the level of intelligence to the intuition. That's what life occurring to me. So when we understand the teachings of these great people, and if we can imbibe in our life, definitely we'll be able to go ahead in the life and our personality also can be well shaped. And when we understand properly the great utterances of this great monk of Swam Vekanda, who was Rushi himself, who, was, who came from Saptashi Mandala, Narayushi, definitely, any, just you take any one of his teaching and if you seriously think and cogitate and understand, if you can imbibe, if you can put into practice in your life, your life can achieve to the greater heights. You can see your life, you will be a, an achiever, you will be a contributor personality. For an example, Anna Azare, after Gandhiji, after Mahatma Gandhiji, if you see, in the 75 years of this Indian history, in the name of Satyagraha, he was able to unite the India and he was from young age to the old age, everyone supported Anna Azhare. We all know that he, he is one of the icon in India. And during his youthful days, just like many of the youths today are undergoing mental agony, suicidal tendencies. So similarly, similarly, even for some or other, some personal problem. Anna Azara also thought, let me end my life. Let me have, let me suicide and let me end myself. And he was coming from a particular place to his hometown. He came to a railway station, he was waiting for the train to board the train. Immediately thought, before dying, let me have a good thoughts. Let me think of good thoughts and let me end my life so that I will have a good life in the forthcoming lives. Then he saw in the railway platform, he saw a bookstore. He goes there, 15 or 25 paisa, he purchased a book in Hindi. The English, every one of us know, Vivekananda is called to the nation. It is a small book, probably now 3 or 4 or 5 or 6, 7, 8 rupees maximum it might have happened. It is available in English, in, in Bengali, Hindi, in Kannada, Telugu, in all the vernacular languages it is available. It is a pocket-sized book. It is a very short biography of Swami Vivekananda, a few teachings of Swami Vivekananda is there. The book contains that. 
he started reading the train came he boarded the train and it was so much interesting for him it was he continued reading he continued studying he continued studying he continued studying by the time he finished the book then the station where he was supposed to get, get down station came he got down from the train and he walked to his house but there was a great change there was a great change in the mindset of anna hazar he was thinking the life is a heavy for me what is this wretched life let me end my life let me have suicide this was the mindset of the anna hazar during his youth days whereas after studying swam vekananda's life and after understanding after hearing after reading after studying the teachings of swam vekananda his mind got changed he came away he got away he get rid of the suicidal tendency and he said that i will leave and i will not live in any ordinary life instead let me dedicate my life let me dedicate it dedicate my life to the cause of the motherland let me dedicate my life to this bharat mata mother india so that i'll be able to do my humble service for this mother india see there was a great paradigm shift in his mindset by by because he studied swam vekananda he tried to imbibe the swam vekananda life and teachings in his life so that instead of suicide he led the dedicated life committed life for his goals for his values and for the country this is the great change we can see in the swam vekananda I mean in the nazareth life my dear indians so then we can study seriously in depth swam vekananda's life and if you can understand the invisible part of his life or of his teachings he can become the great person he can become the better person for example if you want to be a doctor you can be the better doctor if you want to be an engineer you can be the better engineer if you want to be a research scholar you can be the better research scholar if you if you want to be a politician you can be the better politician if you want to be a business entrepreneur you can be the best better entrepreneur my dear engineers that's such a beautiful thoughts Goals are there in the Swami Vivekananda's uh, teachings. We have to understand. Now, coming to today's teaching, arise, away, and stop not till the goal is reached. What do you mean by that? These are uh, teaching. One is first part is arise, the second part is awake, and the third part is stop not till the goal is reached. What do you mean by arise? Utishtha, utho. You have to get up. So you have to get up means what? I have to get up from my seat and I have to just uh, walk away from where I am sitting from the chair. Because Swami Vivekananda said that get up, arise, get up, utho. Means I have to get up physically. I have to arise mentally. I have to arise intellectually. I have to arise ethically, morally, and I have to arise even spiritually. And here, special with special reference, I will give. Physically, I have to get up. What do you mean by physically? I have to get up. I have got up. That's why I am able to hear your lecture, Swami Ji. So now, again, you are saying that you have to get up. You have to get up. What does it mean then? I may not be lying on the bed. I may not be sleeping. I may not be dozing. But physically, I am not got up even many times because. because if you have got up you will be active i might have got up i might be sitting on the chair on the cart but i am not active i am lethargical i am morose or my mind is wandering in the 365 uh, direct in the 360 degree in the thousands of direction and i don't know what i am doing so this type of unconscious sleeping we will be doing most of the time so that's the reason and also we can say due to the lethargy i am supposed to sleep for 6 hours or 7 hours or 8 hours maybe i will be sleeping for 10 hours i will be sleeping for 12 hours or so on and so forth whatever is required for my healthy living for my body that much only i have to sleep instead of that if i sleep more that is also waste of time and waste of life even physical awakening we can connect to the thoughts and mental awakening i can do many things swami vivekananda says every time never say i can't every time we say i can i can i can there are n number of people who have achieved wonders 
we have gone to the greatest heights but why it is not happening for me and for you because who is who is the reason for that is my mother father my country my parents are my elders my school my teachers my society my upbringing no you are the cause you are the reason for that we have put ourselves a mask we have put ourselves barriers to our mind to our thinking so that we are unable to understand we are unaware for how much energy is there potentially existing in myself so that we need mental awakening so when i say get up you have to get up mentally i will give an a simple example for you and anand you probably will be able to understand thing better rakshita raju she comes from karnataka she comes from particularly chikmangalur district there's a beautiful serene atmosphere it is full of lush green that particular district as as soon as she was born mother passed away in few days his father passed away and they were very poor she was very she comes from very poor family she had a grand grand race she, she had a grandma grand, grandmother who was blind so with some of the difficulties the grandmother was taking this small kid rakshita raj unfortunately at the age of 5 rakshita raju lost her grandmother where she was the only support for rakshita raju sleep unfortunately rakshita raju had lost had lost his mother her mother father and even grandmother also now she is orphan she doesn't have any one she is a girl born blind rakshita raju more or less and she doesn't have any but as a luck the people of that particular village she they thought this because she has become orphan a destitute no one is there to take care we can't leave her like this we should help her then after enquiry in the bangalore in the bengaluru the capital of karnataka there is a blind school where the blind uh, children will be taken freely and they are given a free education and she and they will see that they will have the uh, life such so some of them came to know this chikmangalur people brought rakshita raju and they were left in this blind school for rakshita raju rakshita raju with all keen interest with all uh, full of concentration she started learning alphabets probably at the class she was studying 6th or 7th standard there were a couple of uh, blind students i mean male uh, boys and girls as well as in their school level function one of his friend one of her one of her friend he stood first in the 100 meters running race he stood first in the 200 meters running race and he stood second or third in the 500 800 meters running race fine everyone clapped that was because he got three prizes for his credit everyone and also clapped but he thought trigger in her mind saying that even my friend is also a blind like me if he is able to run and if he is able to achieve if he is able to get first prize in the 100 meter running race 200 meter running race and third prize in the 800 meter running race why can't i get so this thought it lingered it provoked it got awakened it got provoked in rakshita raju's mind fine such type of thoughts even might it might have come to me and to you or for everyone that was but she did stop for that only as the next day morning as morning prayer over she got up and she started running after 100 or 200 or 300 meters she fell down she had a small pain but it didn't stop her second day she practiced third day fourth day fifth day it went on and the next in the school day rakshita raju was able to stand first in the 100 meters running race second in the 200 meter running race and again she continued her practice she went to taluk level among the blind schools she went to slowly district level she went to national level and she went to international level now of course olympics is going on as we all know yesterday we got one silver medal she was able to participate in the para olympics till then in the country only with a few 
athlete she was able to uh, she participated she got a bar when in the para olympics in the entrance in the entrance test or whatever in the entrance she got cleared and she went in the para olympics 12 to 13 or 14 15 or whatever so 20 countries people had come they were all the best athletes of that particular country when she learned for some time she became nervous her confidence got shaken and she was uh, telling to his teacher a teacher that that there are so many people of the best people from the different countries and already they have got ex- some experience in this uh, field or in this competition probably it is becoming difficult for me to uh, participate this time please excuse me in the fourth coming days actually participate but the teacher didn't leave uh, he gave the instructions he instilled the confidence he awakened the confidence in her and she said you can do it you do it you can do it you, do it. you will do it and develop you will do it you will do it the such type of confidence was assured in the rakshita raju's mind by her teacher and rakshita raju with that confidence she went and she started learning first of all she came from india and there were from different countries who already had first prize second prize third prize in the previous days as a result the announcer was he, uh, he didn't bother about rakshita raju and the other people she was it was mentioned suddenly in the middle of the competition rakshita raju took the lead and he start, then the announcer started searching the name who is she and what is her name so where she came etc etc and rakshita raju rakshita raju wins and she gets first prize she she was awarded first prize gold i mean gold medal in the 1500 meters running race in the para olympics my dear it is possible for rakshita raju was a blind born blind girl and where she didn't had a parents so no one was there for her she is a orphan child and today i think she is called as a golden girl and she dined with our prime minister narendra modi ji she had a click with our prime minister and with a very with many great people and now she has made a record she is one of the pride of our country two years or three years before in the para olympics she got a gold medal in 1500 meters on the race now probably many of us if not all of us many of us also might have desires in athletics in the sports maybe in the cricket maybe in the football maybe in the volleyball or a running race or in the swimming competition so on and so forth but how many of us thought seriously how many of us with dedication and commitment we practiced we put our struggle we labor in our uh, particular field this is what i mean mental awakening or mental getting up rising up such many of us most of us we never think with all difficulties somehow with the distinction i am the trust and stand because that is very important because our teachers have said our parents have said our teachers have said our system is saying with the diff- somehow with all difficulties with a great intense struggle sometimes we pass total standard plus two with a distinction of 80% or 90% and with great difficulty or with a lot of struggles or maybe with a normal struggle we will get distinction or we get first class or we get second class or we get 80% or we will get 90% during our graduation post graduation uh, uh, maybe engineering or maybe it is so much but we can do many things much more things who has stopped no one has stopped us we have stopped ourselves my dear indians this is what when we say swam back on the sir arise you have to rise up you have to be conscious that mental awakening has to come and the third aspect one more aspect of this arise can be intellectual awakening intellectual awakening for example who discovered who invented the gravitational force every one of us we know actually and this is a story whether it is this is a true story or not we don't know but at least for our understanding sake we shall uh, think that this is a true story how albert einstein discovered or invented his gravitational force he sat under a apple tree he sat under a apple tree on friday and he was thinking something an apple fell on his head imagine if we are going to simla or kulu mala kulu manali or uh, stenagar we are sitting under the apple tree and apple fell on your head what do you do immediately you eat immediately you take a selfie or in generally we eat or generally we take a selfie 
but the albert einstein the albert einstein took the upper and he started thinking saying that are thinking that why did upper fell down only it would have stayed there and it would have gone up and it would have, it would have gone either and either why it came down why 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 the single thought this is swami vekananda himself the single thought swami vekananda as he says the i used to catch us in the ego he catch holds of this thought and he starts thinking why 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 then in no time he started understanding that there was an intellectual awakening so yeah he got he got the answer this is what the gravitation force in this earth whatever i if i throw in something the uh, earth it again it comes it, it falls down he understood and what is that uh, uh, force or why it is so that is what he invented sorry uh, that is what gravitational force i mean newton isaac newton isaac newton Uh, i think i i told all the times it is isa newton that what intellectual awakening there are so many things are in front of us in the midst of us but we don't have intellectual awakening we do, we don't see we don't observe we don't question why it is how it is where it is when it is how it is how why 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 this type of thinking we don't have this is what intellectual awakening for that you need not to study lot of things for that you not to be a great wise person great a person of intellect but this type of intellectual awakening we should have and we can be a different person you can get different person then spiritual awakening i will take the next step so what is then awake arise this is the first part mover and what is what do you mean by second awake awake is rising to yourself consciously you do whatever you are doing for example i am eating i am eating rasgulla consciously eat rasgulla and every piece of rasgulla when you are eating just enjoy it when you are playing with someone consciously you play and enjoy similarly when you sit for study consciously you study what you are studying you keep you completely put on your put your mind for the study and every thought every line every word you try to understand then you will be the master over that subject similarly when you sit for meditation control your mind consciously you meditate be aware that i am meditating i am meditating on my shadevata maybe bhagwan shri krishna or maybe kali or maybe durga and when you are talking with someone be conscious that you are i am similarly i am not i am not this body i am not the mind i am not the intellect i am not the senses I am the Atman. I am the Brahman. Satchitananda. Shivu. 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 This consciousness is very, very important. So, Avekananda. That's what from the spiritual point of view. This awakening has to come. Till then, we are not. That is our. Uh, that is our real goal, actually. Till then, we are not supposed to stop uh, in our life journey. We are not supposed to stop because our struggle should continue, continue, continue. This is what awakening. Mental awakening. Intellectual awakening. and also the other awakening is called spiritual awakening what do you mean by spiritual awakening understand who are you now the question may come what does it what does it happen the moment if i understand i am that atman where nainam chindanti shastrani nainam dahati pavakah nechainam kledayanti apuna shoshayati manuh okay you might have heard this where the sword cannot pierce you the air cannot dry the fire cannot burn and the water cannot wet and that is your real nature okay i understand that what does it happen my atm balance will increase or will i get any promotion in my mundane life no but you can be the better person you can be the best person this is one thing as vamek on the beautiful tells quote teach yourself teach everyone his real nature call upon the sleeping soul and see how it awakes power will come goodness will come purity will come and everything that is excellent will come when the sleeping soul is roused to self conscious activity the same thing we can see even in the life of swami vivekananda during swami vivekananda's youth days when his father passed away he was doing his post graduation he was pursuing his post graduation his father passed away everyone of us know due to heart attack and whatever uh, in the name of his father there was a forgery lot of forgery and as a result uh, whatever the wealth was there here swami narendra he had to give all that wealth most of his wealth was dissolved 
and the, their own relatives whom narendra dutta's father vishnu dutta had helped even they sued a uh, false case on narendra narendra dutta's narendra nath and his mother bhuneshwari devi and their uh, their whole family and they were kicked out from their house till yesterday they were dining in the silver plate in the silver spoon and today they had lost their uh, father and they came on the platform even without uh, there was no house to stay the granary i mean narendra nath's uh, mother's brother uh, she took the all of them to the her house and she provided a shelter she provided a shelter no doubt but food and clothing i was supposed to take care by themselves so amrekanda was such a great intelligent person wise person he went door to door and he knocks the door and he started asking i need a job to support my family can you give a job can you give a job most of the time he didn't get it so amrekanda in himself says at that time i was walking so much i used to go here and there so much my sandals went out means uh, so much he had to uh, search for a single job and finally he got uh, he became a uh, teacher in one of the school and slowly afterwards he became a headmaster of the school also because there was a poverty in their house swamvekananda used to take only one square meal many of the time swamvekananda used to say for their for his mother that i have i had the i had my food in my uh, with relative house or with the friend's house so i will not take any food today please you can you finish your food you used to tell lie and used to go inside the house used to drink lot large amount of water used to feel so much hungry used to have a large amount of water and used to tie a towel for his stomach to bear that pain to bear that pain of hunger and used to sleep and cry many times many used to sit in the college for listening and used to become many times unconscious why because there was no food why you were not taking even sometimes one square meal because he used to think if i don't take one square meal my old mother and my elder sisters and my younger brothers they may have they will have at least two morsel of food more so that so that let them have the food and i will bear all this hunger bear all this pain or whatever so such type of lot of problems from vikram had to face narendra had to face during his engagement two or three of his friends tell that if you, because you were a handsome guy from the reputed family one or two ladies they want to enjoy they want to enjoy your body just for one or two hours maybe if you allow your body to be enjoyed for, from them and they are ready to give thousands of rupees hundreds of rupees or thousands of rupees so on break on the narendra immediately he said that i will never lead such an immoral life i will never i may die due to hunger even my family may die due to hunger but i will never lead such a immoral life you new people should not lead uh, such immoral life if you bring such type of thought such type of proposals from next time i will even cut my relationship with you this was the the utterances told uh, uttered by swami vekananda as a young narendra once due to hunger and due to uh, thirst and so on uh, he fell down in the kal in the streets of kolkata he had a, some divine experience experience of the atman i am not this body i am not this mind so on immediately just so much energy he is the power of power house of the energy store of some energy if uh, he and he felt or he experienced so he got up all his dryness thirsty hunger everything went away with uh, so much bliss he was able to just he walked he walked to his house or to the to his working place because at that time he understood that i am not this body i am not this mind i am not this intellect i am this divine uh, atman brahman or whatever you can see even in the life of swami vivekananda so much he had to face lot of difficulties how it is not mere sheer will it is not mere sheer will rather big one is his character the other is because he was aware who is he so once you become aware that i am the atman or i am the brahman you will be able to you will be able to lead the beautiful life as i said you can if you want to be a mom you can be the better mom if you want to be a doctor you can be the better doctor if you want to be an engineer you can be better engineer how because now we are the slaves of our body because we are thinking that i am body we are thinking that i am mind we are thinking that i am intellect we are thinking that that emotions so we are slaves to our body we are slaves to our mind we are slaves to that intellect we are slaves to the emotions we are slaves to the thinking the moment you understand that 
I am not this body, mind, intellect, body, mind complex, and I am the Atman. The moment you understand, the moment you understand, you will be the master for your body. You will be the master for your mind. You will be master for your intellect, for your thinking, for your emotions. Then you can do anything and everything. Because this is the mind which is binding us. The, our own mind is stopping us to go further. Yad bhavam tad bhavati. As you think so, you become. What does it mean? Because as you think that, if you think that you are Atman, you are Brahman, you will be able to achieve so many things. And the moment you, if you think that you are body and mind, then your achievements will be less than. This is what when Swami Vivekananda says, awake, awake, awake. We have to awake ourselves. We have to rise ourselves. We have to understand ourselves. Who are we really? Then, the third, the third point is, stop not till the goal is good. Here, when we say that goal, I would like to sizzle it out. I would like to break it out into the two parts. The one goal is called primary goal according to me. The, what is the primary goal? As Sri Ramakrishna says, as Swami Vivekananda says, as all the our scriptures have uh, told that, realize who are you. The self-realization or the God-realization is the primary goal of our every human being of our life. This is the primary goal. Till then, till achieving, till understanding who am I, I am not supposed to stop my struggle. I am not supposed to stop my life journey. Till understanding who am I, my life journey continues, continues, continues. Not only in this life, even in the forthcoming life. Punarapi Jananam, Punarapi Maranam. Then, the second, we have got also secondary goals. That is what mundane in life. For example, I want to be an IS officer. I want to be an IPS officer. I want to be a doctor, MD. I want to uh, be an I want to be a professor. I want to be a great business magnet. I want to be a philanthropist. This is what secondary goal according to me. So both we should have. One is primary goal. The other is secondary goal. The primary goal is called the self-realization. Atma Sakshatkar. The secondary goal is called mundane goal. Whatever we want to become. We have to fix our goals. We should have the goals. And again, in the secondary goals also, we are, we are, that is, again, I, I would like to break into two parts. In the secondary goal. What is that? One is immediate goal, the other is long term. So, what is the long term goal? That is uh, becoming a doctor, becoming an engineer, becoming an IS officer, becoming an MLA, MP, or uh, becoming a prime minister of the country, becoming the great business magnet of the world, or uh, becoming one, one among the top 10 engineers, so on. That is what the uh, long term goal in the secondary goal. The other is immediate goal. Now, for an example, I am pursuing my degree maybe engineering, I want to be a best engineer. That is the, in the secondary goal, that is the long term goal. Now at present, I am supposed to study well. I am not supposed to study just for exam purpose. I am not supposed to study just for assignments purpose. I am not supposed to study just for internals purpose. I am supposed to study for the knowledge purpose and to become the best engineer I am supposed to study. The immediate. Or if I am in a 10th standard, I, I should get good marks, I should excel in my studies. If I'm in a 12th standard, I should excel in the science and mathematics so that I can be an engineer. This is what the immediate goal. These are all uh, in a very capsule form, I'm telling. Every one of you should uh, deeply you should think so that you'll be able to get, you'll get a clarity of mind, you'll, be, you'll get more and more clarity in these things. And you'll be, if you can put yourself in your mind, uh, in the practice in your life, you'll be able to do. And, well, and also, the other, stop not till the goal is, the, till the goal is reached. The other aspect is, one is personality development, the other is service to the mother. I want to be an MBBS, best doctor, fine, you be the best doctor. I want to be the best engineer, fine, I should earn thousands of rupees, crores of rupees, fine, you achieve, you be a karodpati, you be a millionaire, you may be a billionaire, fine. But along with that, leave the life of values. And also serve the people, serve the need, serve your country, serve your motherland, at least serve at least uh, your nearby people who are suffering, who are struggling. So this service is also is included in, when I say, rising oneself, arising one's own consciousness. Probably, Suhasini, Srimati Suhasini, who comes from Bengal, all of you know, uh, uh, you might have been, she is a Padma Shri Award, recently, eight, uh, two or three. One, uh, two or two years before probably. What did she do actually? She comes from West Bengal. 
now probably her age is 60 i mean 70 or 80 so in her days in her young days she had a child marriage at the age of 12 or 14 she had a uh, marriage at the age of 60 i mean uh, by the age of 18 or 20 or 22 18 or 20 or 22 unfortunately her husband had a peculiar disease and because lack uh, lack of money, because they were poor people, lack of money, they, she was unable to give any good uh, medical treatment and her husband passed away and she had a two children. She was selling vegetables and whatever she was getting that mere income in that she was supposed to take care of her family, of her two children. And the two children read well, they got the medical seat and they finished their MBBS also and MBBS uh, doctor, I mean, certificate was also awarded for them in the convocation. In the convocation, they were both of them very happy. Even the mother was also very happy. They both of them they got their medal and their convocation certificate, and they kept at the feet of her uh, their mother. Mother, because of your dedication, because of your commitment, because of your sacrifice, we we are whatever. So please accept my, uh, please accept our salutations, namaskars, and. Please tell us what you want. Till now you are struggling, no doubt. From tomorrow onwards, we are going to work. We are going to fetch the money for you. You need not to work. You need not to sell the vegetables. Fine. And also, you please tell what you want. What is your desire? So accordingly, we will plan our life. We will plan. If the same question is asked, probably most of you think, probably they will, she will ask that, okay, I will get a good, please give a good salary. Good salary. Try to get some good salary for me, try to get some jewelry and build a good house and you marry so that uh, let me have a grandchildren, we will have a happy life. Such type of uh, desires probably might have been put forth by this Suhasini Dev. No, for their astonishment, Suhasini Dev said that, can you open dispensary or hospital for the poor? This was the request, this was the desire told by Srimati Suhasini Devi to their children. They were asked them, dumbfounded, and they were saying, what do you want? What do you say? You don't want money, you don't want any good jewelry or a good sari and so on and so forth. You want to serve the people. You want to open the dispensary hospital for the poor people. Why you want this? She tells that, as you know, we came from poor background, poor family. And I didn't have enough money so that I was not able to take care of your father. And your father passed away uh, at very young age and I became a widow. I don't want my, uh, my sisters, sisters or daughters of this clan to become, to, be the, to become the widow like me due to the lack of medical treatment. So can you start a dispensary and hospital so that we'll be able to do our meager service, humble service for the poor people so that uh, whatever the fate came to me, I don't want the same similar thing to others also. Yeah. They said, okay, mother, whatever you say, we will do it. But where is the money to start dispensary and hospital? She says, in the meager income, whatever I was getting, I was trying to collect little money and I was uh, so just uh, depositing them that uh, money in the bank, I don't know how much money is there, please you go and withdraw the money and whatever is, whatever comes from there, you will, will, will let us have a humble period of the dispensary. For, for everyone's astonishment, it was few lakhs. And they withdraw the money and they started a dispensary, slowly, 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 it grew. I think two, 10 or 12 or 15 places, dispensary and hospitals are there and uh, Suha City's uh, children are able to serve the uh, poor people of the thing of the short term. So, you see, this is what the rising ones comes Abe, she has awakened. She's an awakened lady. She may be a poor person. Probably her signature is her thumb impression, maybe. She comes from a poor background. She uh, she's illiterate according to us, but she's an awakened lady. So we need to be awakened like this, my dear Indians. So stop not till the goal is reached. We should have the goal, whatever. One is primary goal, the other is secondary goal. In the secondary goal, one is immediate goal, the other is long-term goal. So till then, one is self-actualization, self-realization, and the other is in the mundane life. We should keep, we should fix some goals. And till reaching our goals, we should keep going, we should keep going, we should keep going. Go forward, go forward, go forward. This was the uh, formula or the teaching given, given by Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. Then who is stopping us? No one is stopping us. 
we are stopping ourselves our thinking is only stopping we have not thought over like this our mind is not awakened our intellectual is not awakened our thought process is not well defined well processed that's why we are not able to think and uh, unfortunately even in our education system many of the times we don't get such type of training we got we don't get such type of ideas most of the times my dear indians so we should think we should think we should think in the right way in the right perspective so that we can be the achievers not the losers and we can be the contributor personalities not the passive personality we should be the active personality and we should be the contributor personality how can i serve the motherland how can I serve my country how can I serve my fellow beings and achieving greater heights in my life also so this type of thinking is very much required my dear indians this is what i have understood from arise of it stop not till the world still i we can give many examples of uh, sudan shubhis was who started uh, ramkrishna ashrama in the uh, south 24 parangana west bengal his life is also a great lesson for us if possible you can google it sudan shubhis was life there are great people even uh, baba ali who comes from murshidabad district in the west bengal every one of us be here from we can say given he also they alone leave holy for others rest are dead more than alive this is the a statement which heard by uh, baba ali just probably at the class of class 4 uh, or 5 and he started okay like, i should serve the people as from where the said that's what he understood from the saying then he was thinking again he comes from the poor background or the middle class background he was he comes from again a the village then he was thinking how can i help how can i help the people he himself was five or six standard boy then he called first or second or third standard students from their own uh, vicinity from the Uh, village and he started tutoring them he started teaching them slowly slowly under the uh, in the footpath or under the flyover then slowly at the age of 16 or 18 he became the youngest headmaster in the world again this baba ali hails from west bengal he is also a awakened person i can say and today in the cbc board i think here state of cbc board his lesson is there just uh, recently finished his post graduation even he is very much connected with me and with the most of our monks with the ramkrishna mission so such type of awakening is supposed to happen and that energy infinite energy is there potentially hidden in all of us we have to get awakened and we should be the achievers so that i should be happy and contented my parents should feel proud of uh, our achievements our teachers should feel proud of our achievements and our country and our society should feel pr- uh, proud happy contented about our achievements such infinite energy is there in every one of us so we shall try to manifest that energy which is potentially hidden so that we shall be the achievers my dear ingredients yes if you have got any questions i would like to answer your questions thank you swami ji for a wonderful talk uh, we got to know the meaning of the statement of swami ji arise and then what is meant by awakening and what is the goal there also you talked about what is the primary goal of life and what is what are the secondary goals and all that so yes you can go to questions now uh so please raise your hand if you have questions we'll call out your name you can unmute yourself and ask questions and you can ask questions in bengali hindi english or kannada as swami ji told maybe even in telugu tamil hindi bengali okay okay yeah so somebody there is a question in the chat by saurav karmar he is yeah, asking uh, he is basically asking like what uh, how to do unselfish work living in the world don't expect anything from anyone and keep on working that is the way of doing unselfish work the moment you expect that it becomes a karma karma that is a selfish work so the moment don't expect anything from anyone and just keep doing work keep working keep helping the people are doing service keep serving the people then that becomes unselfish that is the way yes yeah uh yes suchitra you can unmute yourself and ask the question thank you swami ji i was very enlightened with the uh, the, the, the exposition given by you so you. right now right now i am uh, having a problem with two people young people they are just mm-hmm. now lost both of their parents are both are very frustrated and very uh, negative mentality oriented and uh, i have taken up the responsibility of mentoring them so are how the children do i or the parents 
they are uh, 20 plus uh, girls both of them are girls unmarried okay. girls okay. so uh, then i was thinking of uh, like uh, making a beginning with uh, swami ji's exposition so i was just thinking where to start i'm having a starting issue here can you please guide me yeah you can explain them that the death is inevitable either for you or for me or for your parents and my parents or whomever so so this death is inevitable this is the hard core truth of the life this is the fact of life we are supposed to accept one thing and second thing because our parents have passed away so if you sit morose if you are just sitting and crying that doesn't solve your problem one thing the second thing and the third thing the mom and the you should be an achiever by becoming an achiever and by achieving things and by leading a happy life your parents for an example in the from puranic sense from mythological sense i'm saying that your parents are in the pitra loka they will be seeing you what my daughters are doing or what my son son is doing so if you do a achieving life if you lead a happy life if you lead the uh, life of contentment and happy you and your parents also will feel happy so whether you were you you want to make your parents happy or unhappy tell kids or tell my dear indians so you should lead the life of achievement life of happiness so on and so forth you can tell and you can slowly change change their minds and also it doesn't go in one in a day or two it depends on their mindset and all slowly slowly you should keep on telling positive things for them and we should keep them busy in their studies or in their maybe in the work or helping people so like that so that slowly slowly they'll be able to come out from that so we should keep on telling them positive thank you maharaj pranam maharaj namaste anyone else yeah uh by maybe by telling the stories of ramayana mahabharata maharana pratap as i said baba ali for an example this suhasini i told our bhagwan shri ramakrishna swam vivekananda and about our vedas upanishads puranas and there are the rich legacy is of bengal also there are kamala kanta ram prasad such a beautiful saints have come loknath baba in the bengal also for that matter so we should keep on telling their stories we should keep on telling the great personalities life and achievements and we should also keep on telling how the india is great how india is unique and indian culture indian civilization indian wisdom these things directly or indirectly we should keep on telling here here and there now and then for the students for the children if if not in the education system in the uh, house houses as a parenting definitely they will be able to imbibe this spirit in their own way and they will be the better citizens of this country thank you for the answer maharaj abhik bardhan please unmute yourself and ask महाराज मान बर्तमान परिसिंग पथ निर्देश देंगे yeah say for an example i think this is the beautiful story given by shri ramakrishna parable that in the there is a huge godan godan where the rice bags were stolen the owner had a problem of the rats whatever he do he does but still the rats were somehow they were able to manage to come inside and they used to eat rice and they used to cut the rice bags and lots of lot of loss used to happen then one find a thinking thinking then he thought okay and he puffed rice moody moody amra bowling moody puffed rice he bought a bag of puffed rice and he poured that puffed rice in uh, just around the rice bags 
and maybe uh, according to the size of the gudan maybe one bag ek basta na do basta teen basta moodi ne ishte levo so three bags of a puffed rice he brought and he just he spread out around the rice bags then the rats entered when the ra rats came rats came and they were busy in eating the puffed rice and when the stomach was full they probably they might have gone back or they went back so so his rice bags were safe so this is what happens with us of course in the sense gratification while enjoying with the senses we get happiness no doubt but it is infinitesimal part maybe one tenth of that only one tenth of it only we get but when we rise ourselves to the level of mind and we get a mental joy then the joy the amount of joy the quality of joy it is more and when we go to the level of intellect and emotions the joy whatever we get we get is that is much more and when we go to the level of atman or brahman the spirituality the amount of bliss the amount of happiness is inf it is infinitely more such we have to, this fact we have to understand and we should keep on tuting we should keep on telling the sakal said we should keep on giving auto suggestions to our minds one and we need to have a control of the mind definitely we should have a control of the mind second thing and the third thing we should have a quality life good time table uh, our maybe like our viewing our hearing and our whatever we see in the internet today's internet world and the watching movies etc etc everything should be accordingly organized we see all nasty things all hasty things and still be we feel that your mind should be pure and we should not live at the level of instinct and our mind should be under control it is not possible so what you see what you hear what you think all these things also matters so there we should have some check and we should try to lead a uh, disciplined life then you will be able to come out from the level of instinct to the level of intelligence abhyasa and vairagya that's what bhagwan shri krishna tells in bhagavad gita in the sixth chapter this is what in the formulas way we can say abhyasa abhyasa is right practice vairagya is keeping away yourself from the wrong things and wanted things which as sri ram swami kind of says uh, reject it as a poison which makes you weak physically mentally intellectually morally or spiritually so reject it as a poison for that you need will power and by exercising will power slowly 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 you will be able to get it धन्यवाद महाराज दिग्दर्शन महाराज प्रणाम नमस्ते i have already okay. crossed uh, uh, first uh, two target actually okay. now my i now my question is actually i am a working person so kabhi okay. kabhi kabhi mujhe ye uh, soch man mein aata hai ki kya mm -hmm. main kaam jo kar raha hu wo kaam chhod dun kaam chhod ke koi uh, actually mujhe na uh, kabhi kabhi ye feel hota hai uh, je man mein uh, je main uh, जो सेवा जो करना चाहिए कोई ह्यूमन बीइंग के लिए या कुछ करना चाहिए वो टाइम मुझे नहीं मिल रहा है उस काम के चक्कर में इतना प्रेशर रहता है एक्चुअली बेसिकली आई एम ए सेल्स पर्सन सुबह साढ़े आठ बजे से ऑफिस चालू होता है साढ़े सात आठ बजे तक खत्म होता है उसके बाद पूरा शेड्यूल में ना कोई टाइम भी मुझे नहीं मिलता है किसी से जाके या कोई अच्छा वाला काम करने के लिए उसमें वो वास में जो मुझे मानस सुन नहीं सुन पा रहा हूं मैं टाइम जो अच्छा वाला काम करने का टाइम मिल नहीं मिल रहा है तो अच्छा आप अच्छा काम करने, करने के लिए नहीं टाइम मिल रहा है यही आपका समस्या है क्या हां यस 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 ओ संडे में क्या होता है एक्चुअली संडे में भी और एक फैक्ट है मैं यहां फैमिली के बिना रहता हूं तो संडे मेरा बहुत सारा काम रहता है रेगुलर वॉशिंग कुछ कभी कभी खाना भी पका लेता हूँ ये सब काम रहता है और कभी वो स्टडी भी, 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 भी फिर भी एक घंटा दो घंटा तो आप स, मतलब समाज सेवा के लिए सोशल सर्विस के लिए तो रख सकता है ना 
अब काना हाँ, पकवान है ठीक है सफाई घर सफाई करना है लेकिन कपड़ा सफाई करना है जो भी करो जो भी करो फिर भी एक दो घंटा तो समाज सेव के रख सकते हैं एक और एक जो आप पैसा अभी शायद आपका दस हजार कम रहे आप उसमें पांच सौ नहीं तो हजार रुपए कुछ समाज सेव के, से के लिए आर्फन के लिए कुछ ना कुछ डोनेशन दे वो भी समाज सेव कर सकते है ना हम लोग क्या सोचते हैं मतलब बड़ा बड़ा करना है ठीक है तो बड़ा बड़ा करना है तो अच्छा है लेकिन आजकल अभी मेरा जो सिचुएशन है इसमें इससे और इसमें क्या कर सकता हूँ सोचना है करना करते रहना चाहिए फिर थोड़ा समय के बाद भगवान के कृपा से हमका अच्छा होगा तो ज्यादा समय मिले तो ज्यादा सर्विस कर सकते हैं करूंगा अभी जो समय मिलता है इसमें जितना हो उतना सिंसियर से सिंसियर से करने दो ओके महाराज प्रणाम स्वामी जी समन हैज आस्ड ए क्वेश्चन इन चैट आई विल रीड इट फॉर यू Mm-hmm. while explaining awake part you advise us to be totally mindful of whatever we are doing but yeah. except when we are studying or or in another activity where complete presence of mind is required it is mm-hmm. is it better to continue repeating our guru mantra while doing such tasks or being mindful is there any no. benefit at all yeah yeah see when you are for an example walking when you are walking definitely you can do you can chant your guru mantra you are washing your clothes you can do Are you are eating probably by eating you enjoy the eating at the same time you can also think of guru mantra but when you are studying you are not supposed to think of your guru mantra when you do such type of like for example you are sweeping the floor mopping the floor you are washing you are ha- you are bathing are you are cleaning some utensils are you are just walking are you are sitting in the bus isn't it such time and all you can repeat guru mantra but when you are studying especially when you are studying definitely you are not supposed to because if you keep on thinking of guru guru mantra or guru maharaj mantra and if you studying definitely it will not be a full concentrated mind it is not possible yeah so uh, he is also asking like while do, doing this mundane activities for example mopping the floor and all those things mm. so should we do it completely mindfully or in the corner of our mind we can chant guru mantra and yeah, be in the corner of the mind you can do it mindfully and at the same time you can also at the corner of the mind or with the part of the mind you can chant guru mantra okay so shall we end the session uh, yes maharaj we can end the session there are no more questions yeah thanks so thank you very much and i i i could have given some more examples but explaining this itself it took time hmm. thank yeah. you for enlightening us uh, we'll have nikhilesh for doing jaykar at the jai shri guru maharaj ji ki jai jai maha mai ki jai जय स्वामी जी महाराज जी की जय जय गंगा माई की जय प्रणाम महाराज थैंक यू महाराज थैंक यू महाराज नमस्ते थैंक यू स्वामी जी